Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate the symmetry assembly constraint, which always was a little bit mysterious to me in the sense of I wasn't completely sure how I was going to use it or where I was going to use it. So I'm going to demonstrate that today, and the scenario that I'm going to highlight is actually multi-body modeling. So what I've done is I've created a tank like so. I've got a cap, a coupler, the main tank body, and I want to build an assembly out of this. So <clears throat> I've created all of the solids already. I'm not going to go through that multi-body technique. If you have questions on that, maybe I could knock out another video. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to really quickly move through that. And I'm going to generate an assembly from these components. We'll go ahead and make this a weldment so I can weld it up later. We'll save it as a new assembly here in my January folder. Cool, hit next. And like I said, there's a lot we could do in here. Um, I'm just gonna go really quickly through it and I will hit okay. So what's gonna happen is it takes each solid body and it generates a new part file. So it's very important right away, you wanna hit save. So I'll go ahead and save that hit OK. And <clears throat> there we have it. So I've got my tank started and it looks pretty good. I've got the coupler, the end cap, but of course I have another end cap. So I want to basically mirror this over. So I'm going to open up this file and it actually, the way the multi-body technique works to build an assembly is it derives each solid as a new part. So if I edit this derived part, in this case, I want to grab my tank midplane. So I hit OK. That's going to be the midplane of the tank. I come back over here. There's that. That uh, plane is now available. And so we can come over here to the assembly and we can do a mirror component. So I'm going to mirror the end cap. My mirror plane is going to be the plane I just brought over. And uh, we don't have to re, uh, you know, create a new one. We can just reuse everything. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and hit next. Yep, cool, we don't have to do any renaming, it's just the same part flipped over to the other side. So the cool thing with multi-body techniques like this is everything is grounded in the right spot. Um, we could, if we wanted to, uh, you know, ground and root everything as well, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. And what's really nice about this technique is that it's all based on this original design. So, if we come over here and we change, for example, the tank size, let's say it's uh, now 120, maybe the diameter changes to, I don't know, 42. So we can make changes to the design. And what's cool about it is it updates in the assembly, except, oops, not perfectly. So you can see one end cap is great, the other end cap, mm, not so much. So this is where the symmetry constraint can be very helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unground this end cap here and I'll just get it out of the way. It might make it easier if I move it a little bit. And this is where we can use the constraint for symmetry. So what symmetry does is it allows us to take two different components and it mirrors their position about some central plane. But here's the trick. You have to be very careful what you pick. So you want to make sure you zoom and orbit, and you want to pick the same thing on each. So if I pick the dome, I have to pick the dome on both. If I pick the edge, see it's a very different point between dome and edge. So I make sure I grab this edge here, and then I'm going to grab the same thing on the other side. And then the third selection is your central plane, and it pops it into place. So now I'm able to make that symmetric about that tank. So if we come back here and we make an additional change, let's bring it back to 96. You can see what happens. Change that, whoops, let me just close this guy. Sure, save it. Go back to the assembly. We'll see it's got an update. And you can see now that changes with the symmetry constraint as the size of our design adapts. So that's where the symmetry constraint can be extremely powerful. It allows me to pair up 
certain conditions. And like I said, this is a great example of it. Maybe opposing door handles could also work, but yeah, it's not a constraint I use super often. So when I came across a scenario where I thought, boy, this works really, really nicely, I wanted to share that with you. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.